Hello and welcome back to the Cheltenham Exchange for the second of our Twitter Tips series. Um, if you haven't watched the first video, go back and watch it. But the um, the premise of these is that we'll put a poll up on Twitter every single day in February, get everybody on Twitter's opinion on who's going to win the race, you know, any dark horses, etc. And then at the end of the week, once we've done e uh, well each of the days, we'll then put out a video and then just discuss people's thoughts. So that's sort of the premise uh, and that's what the video we're doing today is um as you can see joined by ian and johnny today how are you guys all good very good you. sorry and i caught you mid mid beer so. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, very good been, been to work today so uh yeah all good. got him at the best time okay yeah. Um, so yeah, well, we'll get stuck in then. Um, so as, as everyone knows, first day of the Wednesday is, well, is what was formerly called the Ballymore, is now the Bearing Bingham Hurdle. Um, and similar story to the Supreme, where Ballyburn has actually won the vote. Um, I think probably the biggest talking point of this is actually where does he go, which we're still sort of none the wiser. I'm sure we'll keep getting comments from someone in the Mullins camp saying, Oh, he's definitely going to go supreme, and then more comments from someone else saying he might go to the Ballymore. We'll probably not actually find out until probably what the the Friday before is. That's usually when we get the uh, four, is it, it's forty hours, isn't it? So maybe one of the Saturday, or Sunday, yeah, the Sunday, yeah. But it's funny you should say that. We did have some comments from Patrick today. I think he tried to contradict himself. He said about Ballyburn being a, a Ballymore type, and then he said, "Oh, he and he compared him to Val Tor, and then Val Tor was in the Supreme." So he was like, "What a horse!" Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we're still none the wiser. Still none the wiser. I, no. I, I guess it all depends on how they, uh, what, how, how their work is over the next few weeks, etc., and how they all come back after. But, I mean, let's be honest; that there could be three, two or three more that come out of the race, couldn't there? Mm. It, it's always sort of injury time, isn't it? Last thing you want to see is that injury alert from Road to Cheltenham, and a horse you've backed is uh, gone. So, touch wood, that doesn't happen with any ones we've got. Um. So, yeah, I mean, as you can see on there, Ballyburn's got the highest percentage of the vote, 48%. Slade Steel then with 36 Uh Reading Tommy wrong, a lot smaller than 5.4, and then Other with just sort of the 9.7. Um, Johnny, was that is that sort of how you see it? Does it all sort of depend on Ballyburn? Or if he does line up here, do you think there'll be something else that can take him on? Yeah, I, I think the race does revolve on, on where um, Ballyburn goes, doesn't it, really? So, um I mean, I think he might go to the Supreme now after being in the sort of bearing Bingham camp all year. But after that performance a couple of weeks ago, then, you know, I, I think he set on Supreme. So if you look at the race without him, then I think it's really, really open, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, and that probably reflects in some of the comments we've had down below with a few horses, a few different horses being mentioned. Um like Slade Steele's done nothing wrong, really, has he, with his performances this season? Obviously, beaten by the better horse last time. Um, the likes of Ilan Antartique could uh, could go well, and you know he, if Ballyburn is in the Supreme, I suspect, like Jamie says there, that um, Paul Townend will ride him. So, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's quite a few there that could throw the hat into the ring. Yeah, and um, post race when uh, Ballyburn beat Slade Steel, I think there were some comments. I think it was from Ruby who said that he thinks that th that that race was the supreme winner beating the Ballymore winner. So, yeah. um, be some form. He of could well be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He could well be right. Um, <laughs> Ian, any any thoughts? I mean, what are your thoughts on this one? Well, my my wallet wants um, Ballyburn to come here. But um, I, I totally agree what what Johnny was saying. I, I think it's it's leading to Ballyburn going to the Supreme now, um, despite obviously the forty eight percent what we got here in our poll, um, and it, it can be quite wide open. Um, so talking about some of the other Mullins horses that Johnny said about Il Atlantique, you you got ones like Billy Ricky Dicky that have come out and come and done quite well. Uh, reading Tommy Wrong, I think might go to the Bartlett, but there's um. So, so, even the, the British hopes you could say like Gidley Park uh, is one. I'm not sure about Captain Teague if he'll come here or not. You never know with Nichols, to be honest. He's another one that can't get your head round. But um, yeah, I think if Ballyburn goes, it could it will be I don't know four or five to one in the field. It could be uh, quite big uh, price wise in the uh, for the betting. Yeah, and then uh, some comments below. Jamie Wren, Voice of Ireland. Says uh, he's been, he's been on this track for a while now. He thinks mystical power run here. Um, 
Uh, he thinks that Ballyburn is sort of the natural supreme horse, sort of that typical run from the front, proper stayer as you tend to need in the supreme, and then mystical power, more of the the sort of turn of foot horse that tends to win the Ballymore. Um, I mean, just looking through the the previous winners, I mean, some of these horses do tend to go a bit missing, don't they, once they've won the Ballymore? I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, there's been a few down the years that have won the Ballymore and looked pretty pretty unbeatable and then sort of fallen by the wayside, aren't they? Um, but then City Island looking, being one. Yeah. Um, I think that was Envoy Allen's probably, I mean, his novice hurling campaign was probably his best best season, wasn't it, as mm. well? And I don't know Bob obviously disappeared, didn't he, last season? And so Gerhard's had his problems as well. And Impere Pass, I mean, has he won a race this season? I don't think he has. No, I think, he's, I think he's, he has. Like, no. it's funny, isn't it, how sort of the form of some of these races man. turns out. Um, and yeah, Phil Daniel as well said he likes Ballyburn as well, and happy to have an each way on Gidley Park. Um, obviously, he 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 won the race on trials at Indy Gidley Park, and um, I wasn't overly impressed with him. I think the ho- horse that he beat was rated sort of in the low one thirties from from memory, something like that. So. Um, the form of that race sort of on, on paper doesn't look particularly great, but his, his two wins prior to that looked very impressive. So um, one possibly for for the notebook and see what happens, really. Um, any more comments on, on the, the bearing Bingham? No, um, I think that's it, Alex. I think I'm not sure about what Bill says about the thing. field. I think, I think it could be the opposite. I think if Ballyburn goes supreme, I think you'll have a bigger field here, potentially. Yeah, just in my opinion, just because it'd be more wide open. Interesting. Yeah, cool. We'll I, move I on then if, if you guys are happy. Or yeah, I'm just going to say, Alex, looking at the prices, I think Captain Teague is still a good price to be honest with you. Um, okay. He's had a bit of experience as well, and obviously he's won a couple of races. Um, you know, he might be a little bit overpriced of the ones sort of a bit further down. And um, there's also one I like keeping an eye on. Is this uh, Peaky Boy of Henderson's? But he's only had the one run, so he's not got that much experience, even though he's had a win at Cheltenham. So definitely keeping an eye on him for if it's not for this race, and certainly for the future. Ian would be happy because you mentioned Henderson. Well, <laughs> yeah. Taking over the mantle. Yeah. As, as the expert, Ian, is, is that one for the uh, Peaky Boy? Is that one for no, you? No, definitely. Definitely one to keep an eye on. Definitely. Perfect. Uh, should we move on to the next race then? Yep. Brown Advisory. Excellent. So, uh, next race, Brown Advisory Chase. Uh, no surprise really for me to see sort of fact to file and stay away face so close in, uh, in, in, in the voting, really. Um, fact, obviously had slightly of well, very different campaigns. I mean, fact to file has been campaigned at sort of two and a half miles, hasn't he, a lot. And obviously ran at that trip at DRF and was very impressed against Gaelic Warrior. Stay away Faye with that sort of running proper open company, wasn't it, on trials day against all the experienced horses, which... I mean, it probably is a, there's like a bit of experience is probably far better than running in any of those novice races where he'd be probably like a one to four shot, like egg and spoon race. So yeah, just an interesting one. Um, John, you know, you've been very keen on, on stairway faith for the year. Is, is that sort of what you expected in terms of sort of vote or did you think that he might get sort of a higher share than that? Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people would be scared of factor file and what he did again at the Dublin racing festival. You know, including myself, I think, you know, he looked really, really good. And again, the race kind of revolves around Willie Mullins and where does he place him, whether he comes here or to the Turners. So, um, if fact to file again, if you take him out, then I think Stay Away Faye would have every chance in this. Just basically due to, he obviously likes the course. He jumps well enough. He, he goes all the way to the line. I think this test will really, really suit him, to be honest. And he just never gives up. So, you know, if fact to file doesn't go, I'll be quite really quite keen on on stay away Fay at this moment in time. Brent, but he, fact to file did also lose to American Mike Hurd in this season. I know you think he's an absolute dog, don't you, Johnny? So, well, <laughs> no, it's changed, doesn't it? A little bit. It just shows yeah. how things um, sometimes they're undercooked, aren't they? First time out, and yeah. then they improve throughout the season. Especially quite a few of Willies actually this season. That's mm. happened a lot. Yeah, a lot Maybe of them seem to come there. on for their first run. And then uh, looking through some of the comments, Paul Milner likes Fact to File, says Fact to File if it turns up. Uh, Willie doesn't skip a hurl off campaign with ordinary horses. Florida Pearl, who also won this race, was the last one to do it, so they must rate him very highly. 
Bad Boy Bowls also with a shout for Factor File, but says Monty stars a big chance. Um, friend of the show, Mark, Mark Mackay, Cheltenham Chat. He also really likes Monty Star. Uh, he, was t- he keeps telling us all about it. So um, he, he's, he really likes Monty Star, actually. So, um, yeah, an interesting one there. Uh, and then another shout there for from Harry for Stairway Fair. Well, sorry, not a shout, but step going against Stairway Fair, saying he's not quick enough. So if you look at the last last few years, two and a half mile form comes it comes to Trump's barring monkfish. So I mean, two and a half mile form that would obviously set well, potentially point to factor file. Or I mean, Grey Dawning had some form at two and a half miles as well. So um, lots of sort of varied opinions on this, really. Ian, what are your thoughts? Um. It's, it's so t- we talk about Mullins being over again. It's, it's the same sort of thing we just discussed with the Supreme and the Ballymore with Factor File being the favourite for the Turners and the Browns. And again, it, I think it depends on where he goes. I, I, I don't know. I just wonder if he, he'll go to the Turners, but I think it, again, it could depend on on the well being of Gaelic Quarry after their race and after his fall. Um, <clears throat> and again, it also could depend on go back to JP with. The Roco as well. How if he possibly goes and how fit he is? Maybe he could be the, the JP one for the Turners, and they'll put Factor Foe up uh, for the Browns. So potentially, Mark Walsh could ride both. Um, in regards to competition, um, I don't know. It's hard to say. I've, I've, I've been quite impressed with Gray Dawning um, this season with his win. I know he's second at Cheltenham. I think he clubbed the. The last sort of second ask to Jimmy's Destiny, who's actually done quite well this season, is a big threat for the Turners. Um, some of these others, I'm not sure, will go. Broadway Boy, I think, was was a, a contender until his last run. Uh, when he was third at Warwick, and we're getting behind Grey Dawn in Apple away. So that kind uh, of all ties in. Talking of Broadway Boy, in, I saw uh, an interview, um, I think it was on the At the Races channel with all the sort of twistons, and they were talking. One of the things Willie talked about was Broadway Boy. And they said after the race, he was full of muck. And they said, you can completely put a line through that race. He said, you, you could tell from like the first or second fence that there was something wrong with him. And um, they said he actually, well, considering how badly sort of uh, fully muck he was, they said he was actually, cre- well, it was credit credible, well, creditable, credible, that he ran, ran as well as he did. So, um, yeah, maybe maybe put a line through that one. I, I, I'm certainly not giving up hope on Broadway Boy. It's 33 to 1 in a minute, so that's a, a massive price potentially for a mm. <clears throat> if you want a, a no run and no bet each way bet potentially. That, that could be a, a very nice price. Definitely. And then um sort of looking down sort of previous winners, a, a, another race where some of these winners sort of seem to go missing, don't they? Or or seem to get injured and sort of not really seen. I mean, presenting Percy was never the same horse afterwards. Top of the game. I mean, has he raced since? Um Champ <laughs> no, probably is. No, Champ, I think that was probably his career best to me. Uh, and then Monkfish has only really recently come back. And then, I mean, L- Lon Press had, I think he ran once in the King George, didn't he, afterwards? And then he had 18 months off or nearly a year off. So, yeah, lots of, uh, it, well, not to say injury prone horses, but maybe it takes a lot out of the horses running mm. in this kind of race as, as a novice, which may be why a lot of them tend to go for the sort of the turners like Gallopin did. Mm. Yeah, which is why I think Factor File may probably go for the Turners. Yeah, it makes less, sense. Yeah, less grueling race. I guess it all depends on who who's fit and who's not out of, out of JP's yeah. Yeah. thousands of horses that he's got. <laughs> yeah. Any more comments on the Browns, guys? No, I mean, just going back to Monty Star, I think he's definitely like a really, really solid each way. So if you're putting up together like a each way double each way treble or something, he's like should go in it. I would think, you know, which race he's going to. He's what seven or eight to one. He's probably going to place at the, at the worst. So I think that's quite solid. To be fair, bit of a muggy each way, Johnny. Yeah, the old filthy <laughs> each way. <laughs> or if you if you've got a William Hill epic boost, you can then you know get a bit Ooh, of value yeah. on it. Then yeah, good point. I've got one actually. <laughs> they, they give them every week at the moment. Yeah. If anyone doesn't know, on William Hill, once a week you get an epic boost, or you have been recently, where you can double the odds on one horse that you fancy. Um, I think it's max five pound each way, isn't it? So. Yeah, um, five pound win or five pound each way. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. So if you didn't know, 
maybe worth having a look at William Hill. We're not affiliated to them, so this isn't a hashtag ad. <laughs> this is us just trying to help out some people. So if you didn't know, maybe worth having a look at. Um, happy to move on, guys? Yep. Okay, so third race of the day is the Coral Cup. Um, and as you can see, Langer down with 43% of the vote. Um, I think he's pretty much back down to the mark he was last year when he won it, wasn't he? And there have been some comments from Skelton's Yard in a recent um, stable tour that they found he had some ulcers and they're going to treat them and they think he might get back to what he was. It's all sort of the same stuff we hear every year. He's not the right, same horse in the winter. Um, Johnny, do you think he can do it again? I do, actually. Um, I know it's not very interesting, but yeah, I think he can. I mean, but the price he is at the moment, you just can't back him, can you, at what, 13 to 2, 7 to 1. You might as well wait until the day and take um, boosts or extra places, etc. There's just no point in taking that. But you know what they're like, the skeletons. They've done this before several times with several different horses. He's like the flavour of the month at the moment. And, you know, it's obvious what's been going on all season to, to most of us. So um, I think he can do it again. Yeah, yeah, I do. I've just checked, Tanix. He's got a mark of 141 and he won... Uh, he won at the festival last year off 141. There you go. It says That's it all. exactly where he was. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like horses going back to do a, the same thing that they've already done before, you know, and, and that happens quite a lot in these handicaps, don't you? See one get placed one year, then he wins the next, or vice versa. They'll win one year, then get placed the next. So he's he, he'll be a solid a solid bet on the day, won't he? I I, I guess. Well, he was unlucky that first year in the pipe, wasn't he? Because he bumped into Gallopin. And then the second year in the pipe, he then unseated early, but then won at Aintree. And then yeah. he's then won the Coral Cup this year. Well, last yeah. year. So, I mean, He has one big run a season, doesn't he, basically? He does, yeah. I mean, he, he's, yeah. he's clearly not, not obviously a grade one horse, but, I mean, he's obviously better than 141. But, I don't know, yeah. I, there should be something younger with, with fresher legs that should be able to come past him, really. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, but I mean, he's off like a not bad mark, is he? And he's not a particularly old horse, but yeah, yeah I it's mean, one where I'd, I'd certainly be like, looking to try and find something to beat him. Well, one of the ones I'd taken an early punt on was under control, but I think um, Nicky said about the, the county may be preferable, so I've backed it non runner no bet at 20, so you know, I'll get me money back, but I'd definitely keep an eye on under control, whether it's this race or, or the county. Okay. And then uh, some comments in here. So Stuart Patterson's not happy that we were looking at a handicap. Um, <laughs> well, we, we got to because there, there's handicaps there are at the festival. Um, so he likes uh, Encanto Bruno, non-runner no bet, non-runner money back. Why have they changed it from non-runner no bet to non-runner money back? It, I, I don't know. It just confuses <laughs> me. Um, I like Encanto Bruno as well. He, he doesn't like any rain, any kind of wetness in the course so if it's soft i wouldn't even bother um he's one where if it looks like it's going to be an absolute road or a proper good ground or maybe even good to soft at a push festival i'd probably have a, a go on him on the day but i mean I, I i wouldn't really want to advise anyone to back him at this stage not knowing what the conditions are going to be like because he is ultra ground dependent um also, he also said that Springwell Bay could be one that goes well at the top of the market. And then uh, Rich from Digitips says Zenta. Um, he doesn't know which race she's going to go in, though, but got a great chance wherever she goes, um, which I, I, I can see the logic on that one. Any any other thoughts, Ian, for any other horses? I was just having a quick look now, to be honest. There's so many uh, the horses in the betting, like in, uh, Impost Trial was one, but again, it seems to be going over two miles this season. Um, and, and as Johnny said, are under control, and some of these potentially could, could go up in trip. Um, no, it's, it's hard to say in a minute, Alex. And I'm sorry, it's a bit vague, but yeah, just having a, a quick flick through, nothing really catches my eye at the minute to say he potentially could be well in, or but I think it's, it's the difference between the coral and the county, and same sort of horses will be potentially looking at for both. And mm, we don't know. Hendo's had a few winners in this race, hasn't he? There's, there's no Hendo horses that you're keeping up your sleeve and not telling us about, are there? No, well, just looked at one called Doddy the Great, but um, and he ran well uh, at the weekend in the Betfair Hurdle come fourth. 
But he, again, he's one that's, that's been campaigned at two miles. I, I don't know. He has won at two mile five. I believe he's got a mark of one three two in a minute. So if he goes here, potentially he could be one to keep an eye on. They've been been lightly raced. He's about an eight year old, so he could be a shout if he gets in. Yeah, yeah there's another lightly. Sorry, uh, there's no, another lightly raced one that I like the look of. But but again, it's a skeleton horse. So whether he'd throw both in here is uh, Nurse Susan. I still think she's better than. I think she's up to one three five now. I still think there's a little bit of juice in that mark. She's one over two miles seven, two and a half miles, and two miles in a career. Uh, she was obviously fourth in the Mare's Novice when Love Envoir won it. Um, so, and she won at Cheltenham in, in December. So, she obviously likes the track. That was two very good performances here. So, I'd be interested to see where she, she rocked up, to be honest. But I don't that think the, that's the same owner as Langadan, isn't it? Um, uh, yeah. 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 So so I don't, I don't think they'll put them both in the same race, really. But off one three five, she'd be able to get in the pipe, wouldn't she? So I think yeah, maybe may one for this and one for the pipe then. A, a strong run pipe, and she stays two mile seven would be absolutely ideal, I think, for Nurse mm. Susan. And mares have won the pipe before. Indefatigable, come on, <laughs> Dame de Company. Oh, she won this, not the pipe. Oh, beg your pardon, sorry. It, it was that sort of form, wasn't it, from Cheltenham, where I think Damned Company was first, and then Indefatigable was second. I think it was, was it Trials Day or New Year's Day or something? Mm. Yeah, I think a few people had, had that as the double. So, any any more thoughts on the Coral Cup, guys, or should we move on? No, all let's good. Move on. Right, let's move on then to the Champion Chase. Um, no wow. surprise, really, that El Fabiolo's won. Won the poll with well nearly eighty three percent of the vote. Uh, John Bond with nine point six and Edward Stone with six. Um, wow, I mean, what a performance from Edward Stone at the weekend, wasn't it? I mean, potentially a career best and looked like he really appreciated the the change to those front running tactics. Johnny, is that is that something you think could could really sort of change the <clears throat> look of this champion chase, or do you think it's pretty much dead and buried already? I mean, well, it, it did look dead and buried, didn't it, before the weekend? But, you know, he, he was pretty impressive, to be fair. Um, I mean, I'd sort of put a line through him now after he's been quite poor this season, really, hasn't he? Um, maybe they've just got him spot on for that race and that was his sort of cup final, as it were. But if, if he races like that again, then he could put the others under pressure um, with a jumping, couldn't he? You know, because they've obviously both got a rick in them at, at some point, so... If he jumps like that, then it's going to—you can't be too far off, can you? And then you make a mistake; it's hard to pull that pull that back, isn't it? On over two miles. So, um, yeah, I mean, he's still a good price, really, each way, because you could quite imagine him getting a place, couldn't you? Second or third? Is he um, twenty to one at the minute? I've just seen yeah, is that the price? best price is in on on Edward Stone twenty to one on the Racing Post website. Yeah, he's twenty to one. Wow, I'm not sure if that's Crazy. non no bet or. It's with Coral, but you can get non runner no bet 16s anyway, so still reasonable, isn't it? I mean, I can't imagine there's going to be a huge number of runners in this race, are there? I mean, it's it, it could even be less than eight, in which case, if you can get anti post, like yeah. or non runner no bet sort of three places, I mean, you could be um, that could be an angle at the race, and hmm. yeah, definitely, you might get five runners, won't you, in this. He um he jumped like much better, didn't he? I mean, he he jumped really well in his novice campaign, and then he just didn't quite look the same horse the the following year, and then the beginning of this year still not quite as good. And I don't know, yeah, maybe it's the change of tactics, or yeah. maybe being more aggressive on him just suits him. Um, I mean, you, you don't tend to see too many horses of Alan Kings being re run from the front, do you? Like that? I mean, yeah. know, they tend to get more like a restrained ride, so um. Yeah, I, think, I mean, yeah, he was given a 170 RPR for that, which is one off his highest. So, you know, it was pretty impressive, wasn't it? Leaves him, what, how much to find with Al Fabiolo? I mean, I'm not saying he's going to beat him, but uh, must leave him £10 short, so at least at least £10. Yeah, yeah so Al Fab is 175. Five. Oh, five pounds. One, okay. And he's one. And Edward Stone is one, yeah, 166. Nine pounds. Yeah, okay. 
My concern John was the John one with, after that race on trials day. I mean, it, it was very reminiscent of what happened to Edward Stone the year before where putting all that effort to get back into the race and then just lost it at the end, didn't he? And that clearly left a mark on Edward Stone. I just wonder whether that's going to happen with John Bond. Yeah. You're the Hendo expert, Ian. What are your thoughts on John Bond? <laughs> I, I don't know. I think he um, he, just, he disappointed me so much at Cheltenham last time out. Um, <clears throat> I think it's, I don't know if it was a bad ride or just a, a bad day at the office. He was, just, I don't know, it was, I was gobsmacked, to be honest. But um, as as for the champion chase, I can't see. El Fabiola seems to have the better of him now. So I expect probably John Bond to maybe win again at Aintree, I would say. And El Fabiola will go to, to Punchestown. But yeah, I can't see much far. I think the 82.7% are, are right here, sadly. It's interesting with John Bond, like a lot of his best runs tend to come at the beginning of the season, don't they? I mean, looking back at his novice hurdle days and then novice chase days, it tends to be like sort of very impressive, a sort of sand down in at the beginning of the season. And then, or oh, just seen Johnny's gone, don't worry, you'll be back in a minute, I'm sure. Yeah, and then sort of hours off a bit towards the end, I think, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, it seems to, from what I can see here, so yeah, when, when's like November, December, and then it gets to Cheltenham and gets beat. Um, <clears throat> that was in the Supreme and in the same sort of uh, <clears throat> excuse me thing last season had a couple of wins Sandown and Warwick and then got beat again so and this, this happened again this time Cheltenham Sandown and then got beat at Cheltenham so yeah I think you could be right Alex there hmm, just an interesting one mm. um, any more thoughts on this race or um, the, only, the, only, the only other thing was um, Fernie getting a uh, mm. entry so, yeah, that's just interesting to see what happens. Yeah, just interesting to see how it goes at the weekend, isn't it? And yeah. I love Fernie Hollow. <laughs> yeah, we all love Fernie Hollow. It's just such a shame, isn't it, that he hasn't hardly raced? It's his 25s and a minute. No, uh, and that's we have Unibet and who else? Bet Fred at the minute. So, I don't know. Might be worth, might be worth having a look. That's got to be anti post, isn't it, Ian? Uh, possibly, yeah. I think some of the others are yes. 14, 16s. Um, but yeah, I would, I would say that's probably anti post, but uh, yeah, after be. being on him anti post for the Supreme and then the following year for the Arkle at nice prices, I, I am not putting any money on him unless I can have <laughs> number and no bet. So I don't want him to break my heart again. Wait till the day, um, yeah, wait till the day. Um, quickly go through some of the comments then. Uh, John Higgins said uh, he thinks El, El Fabiola would need to have an off day not to win. He loves John Bond, but thinks he's prone to major and error. Um, thinks Captain Guinness could pick up a place if the ground doesn't go against him. Interesting one. I mean, that's probably quite a nice price as well. Um, Phil Daniel says it's a leap of faith picking John Bond, but he thinks it's all going to click on the day. A lot more confident than our Henderson expert, Ian, mm, is Phil. Um, and then DB is keeping it very simple. which just wins on the snaff, El Fab. <laughs> on the snaff <laughs> we move on let's move on perfect so <laughs> next race is the cross country um if anybody watched uh ranting and racing on chart mental last night or well on tuesday if you don't watch this you know depending on when you watch this video then you'll see i had a bit of a rant about this race thinking saying it should be a handicap and then dave had a rant back saying it's better as it is so <laughs> uh, interesting one um, so yeah, on here, Minella Rindo with 56% of the vote, uh, Delta Work 28.4, Galvin with 8.5, and then a very small amount on other. Um, Ian, what are your thoughts on this one? Um, I, I t actually tend to agree, I know, um, with the people here with the 55%. I was, even though he finished fourth, I was quite impressed with his run at Cheltenham, Minella Rindo, considering he was carrying the top weight, he seemed to. Uh, runner well just behind uh, who was it late night pass I think that day um, what was he five five and a bit lengths behind so I think that was a pretty good run to be honest um, you can't really go much past the uh, the top of the table I don't think Galvin um, he, he ran quite well the weekend uh, I think he ran on the fourth um, was it the 10 up he was in I think it was so he'd, he'd done quite well for a nice little prep run Dale to work was six that day I can't see much PR was it was it the top four so you got Coco Beach and Delta work conflated seem to be going to the uh 
to the Ryanair now, now by the sounds of it, considering he was um, the hot pot favourite for this race for some time. But um, I really can't see much between uh, Manella and Delta Work, to be honest. Interesting with Galvin. I wonder if him being changed over to the Ryanair is maybe a sign that Delta Work's now coming back to himself. Mm. Um, possibly, or I don't know, just an interesting one. What are your thoughts, Johnny? Yeah, I mean, if it was good ground now, I'd say Galvin straight away because I think he's as good as any of the others. Um, obviously, he's very ground dependent, isn't he? Um, it's Coco Beach in it because for some reason on Racing Post he's not listed. There's um, um, most of the betting firms have got him in the betting. Yeah, they Some, have. Two, four, sixes. Maybe he needs to be supplemented. I don't know. Possibly, yeah. Well, I mean, have, have the entries come out for the cross country yet? Um, hang on, let me check. Let me check. Oh, it just says possible entries on there, and it hasn't got him in yeah, it. Yeah, it must not have had full yeah. entries yet. I don't understand why, like, but yeah, I mean, out of the two, I'd I'd rather go with Delta Work to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I, I think he's just like this. It's been this race in mind since he won it last year, basically, basically, isn't it? And he's probably been geared to it. Um, Manella, Manella Indo should run well, but I just think Delta Work would have the edge out, out of the two. But on good ground, then I'd go for Galvin all day long if it was good, mm. good, good to soft, maybe. Because, um, yeah, I'd just rather follow him, to be honest, than the others. But it's not a big betting race for me anyway. It's just a sit back and enjoy, isn't it, type race. Yeah, go and get a beer and just enjoy it. And some yeah. people hate it. I love it personally, but, um, yeah, not a huge betting race. No. Um, uh, comments then obviously Matty said he likes uh, Delta work he thinks that running the boy and hurdle will have him spot on for this uh, Jordan Higgins thinks that Manella Rindo's last run at the course is huge eye catching I mean he was giving away a hell of a lot of weight that day wasn't he and I think he was he what third or fourth mm. he wasn't beaten a long way and then uh, Harry likes Coco Beach which I'm sure Jamie the voice of Ireland will be fuming about <laughs> absolutely fuming Happy to move on, guys, or any more comments about the cross country? No, happy to move on. Let's move on then to the sixth race, which is the grand annual chase. Um, a couple of horses in here that in the sort of the voting that have had form at Cheltenham already this year. Um, got my mate Mozzie in there with uh 36.3 percent of the votes. Uh, Sanra, Sanra, who will be carrying a, a big weight, I think. Is he what mid 150s? Is he? He's he's. From, from memory, something like that. I'll have a look big weight. And then uh, also I, I put up for the DRF, the British British Raider, Madara, um, who I'm actually very keen on for this race. Ian, what are your thoughts on this, the grand annual chase? <clears throat> Samwar is 153, by the way. 153 plus Irish tax, be off <clears throat> 158, something like that? Yeah, he'll, he'll be uh, big way. mega weight on that day. Um <laughs> I have to say, I would say we, me and Johnny were there at, at the DRF, and I was mightily impressed with Madara and uh, how he put some of these to the sold. Um, my mate Mozzie, I can see, I think he's been in, I'm trying to think who he's been involved with this season. I think. Um, Found the 50, is it? Yeah, I see some of them that, uh, have been involved at the. Uh, some of the big races this season. Let's have a look who the. Oh, yeah, Found the 50 and Charger, Facil Vega. Was fourth in that race. He come in, so I can see see the angle that way. Um, let's have a look at some of the betting. Um, Charge, I'm not sure about. Got, let's be clear about it. In Excelsior, Dio, it's, it's quite hard to. I can't say I've looked at this properly, Alex. If I'm honest, but uh, well, yeah, my mate Mozzie obviously won at the course, didn't he, earlier in the year as well? Yes, he That's did. One of his did. bits of form. Very short price, but he couldn't have done it much easier. Uh, trying to think when that was. Oh yeah, that was back in October. Beat Jetronic and uh, was it? Well, I think Walking Walk Clover. It didn't beat much, but yeah, it was still still quite impressive on that day. Got to think if if it if it comes to jumping the last and he's got something next to him that's still going well, it'll it'll probably down tools, won't he? Mm. Um, he's he's not one that you'd want to back at one point oh five on the exchanges. Um, or at least I wouldn't. No. <laughs> What are your thoughts, Johnny, on the Grand Annual? 
Yeah, I mean, not too many thoughts at the minute, but I have always had a soft spot for my mate Mozzie. But I think he's one more for you, I, exactor or trifecta, isn't he? Rather than lumping on a, on a win bet on him, because um, he'll he'll be up there. Um, it's whether how much he finds, as you just said, Alex. But at least he's won at the track now, hasn't he? And he was like you say, he was quite impressive that day, and he's got some decent form uh, behind the uh, founder fifty. So yeah, I mean, I've had an early bet on this, and that's. Uh, Petit Tonnier, which was like eye-catching a couple of times. So um, whether he shows up and that is, an, is another matter, but that was one sort of like uh, earmarked from an early stage. Um, and then when the when the markets were formed, I just had a few quid each way on him. At, I can't even remember what price it was now. I think it was about 20, something like that. So um, no, 15s it was. I got a boost on Hills. So I just had a, a straight win bet on him. So uh See what happens. I think he's. I think he's drifted a little bit now. Actually, um, you need twenties on bet, fair Johnny. Yeah, that. Yeah, and that's um, that's anti post, isn't it? Not non runner no ah, bet. Okay. So, uh, I think he's twelves on bet three six five non runner no bet. So, yeah, I mean, he might have a chance. Uh, he's either he's either been plotted for it or he's just not very good. So you'll see. What are the two? <laughs> It's either a plot or he's shite. <laughs> yeah, he is, yeah, basically. Uh, but I haven't looked too far down yet, um, really, to be honest with you, at this stage. And then uh, going through some of the comments then, John Higgins uh, says, like all handicaps, tough to call. My mate Mozzie's one he's followed, and no disgrace to be one and a half lengths behind founder 50. Last time out gives him a chance on form. Um, weight's not an out yet. Not oh, Sorry, weights are not out yet, obviously, but um, basically add like five pounds to anything that's Irish. He's going to be mm. quite high, isn't he? Mm. Yeah. He's 144, is he now? But then again, I mean, I think a lot of the, some of these handicaps, you can win off quite a, quite a big weight, can't you? I mean, I think Sky Pirate was quite a big weight, wasn't he, when he won? And Yeah, I mean, he's 146, actually. If, if there's a lot in there off a, off, a, off a chunky weight, then, I mean, it's almost like a compressed handicap, isn't it? So, yeah. um, it is, yeah. let's have to see how that plays out. Uh, Harry Drew, who may or may not be Brian Drew's son, who owns Madara, says Madara for the Grand Annual. Uh, I'm not sure if that's actually him. It may be. If it is, brilliant. Thanks for your insight. If it's not, then uh, you've got a very similar name. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Big JT likes in Excelsis Dio, who um, finished behind Madara at Cheltenham and then fell in the race at Sandown, where Harper's Brook finally won. Um Fell at the last one, still going pretty well. So, could be another well handicap one, another one in the uh, JP colours. Any more comments on the Grand Annual, guys? No, that's it. I need to say a bit, bit early to, to say at the minute, but yeah. um, hopefully, we might know more. I think they're out next week. I think with the, the 20th, I think the entries are, are out next week. Well, I'm sure we'll have a look once they come out. Ooh. Should we move on then to the champion bumper? Okay. okay. Okay, so champion bumper. Uh, vote was actually won by Tishan, um, the horse that had a bit of a lot of people on Twitter wanking about. Um, <laughs> Jasmine Devo, or as Robbie Mc, uh, sorry, someone in the comments called him Jasmine De Voxel, um, <laughs> was uh, is one of the smaller prices and didn't get a particularly high set on the vote a set amount of votes. And then Jalen Duderay, Jalen Duderay's in there as well. Uh, I'll come to you first, Ian. What are your thoughts at the moment on Champion Bumper and how things are going? Um, I don't know. It keeps with the bumper keeps changing from week to week. At the minute, we had that impressive winner at the DRF, and then a couple of days after that, come out, it was it was injured, and um, and we had this farce with um, the, the two runners, uh, a dream to share, and we just mucked up the whole bumper picture over there that we that we can talk about on another day. Um, I have to say, I was, I was, T Shan was very eye catching. I had him, um, young Sean from the, the finishing line, tell me about it when he, when he won his point to point to put it in my tracker. Uh, and I've got to say, he was, despite the, uh, the ground, I think it was soft or heavy at the weekend, um, was, was quite, well, very eye catching. Um, Jalon Duderiz is probably the one I'm, I'm leaning to at the moment. I've backed Romeo Coolio, he's only had the one run and not many bumper. Winners in the past of, uh, I think Q card was probably the last one where he had one run and went on to win the bumper. But um, he, he general Duderie, would probably be the one I'll side with at the minute. And I think it could still change. 
Mm. Were you surprised that Tishan got, what was it, 115 RPR on debut? Did you think it was going to be higher? Or? Yeah, considering, we see, Cal- Calcio Cal- got, a, got a higher mark as well in Ireland. Yeah, 127. Uh, yeah, that's ridiculous. You know, the point another one that, I mean, he, he was a hot pot over Christmas, wasn't he? He was yeah. well fancied and... Another one of those okay. where it was quite a few Mullins ones first time out disappointed at that time, didn't they? And mm. maybe he fell into as one of those. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of RPRs at the moment for what's going to run, uh, you ought to know has got the highest, the ones that are going to run at 132 that he put up at the DRF. And then I think it's Jasmine DeVoe and Jalen Dudery 127. And I think it's then Cantico or Cantico, whatever you want to pronounce it, at 120. So they're 128 and he's 127. So um I mean, they're all pretty well found, aren't they, in the betting? Um, James Gill's put, uh, you ought to know every day on the week and twice on the weekend. Ooh, um, he uh, obviously got, we got got that RPR from his one run at the DRF of 132. He didn't get a particularly clear run, did he come around the bend, ran into a bit of traffic. And then uh, post-race comments, I think, I think it was Willie or maybe Patrick, one of them said that they think will come on for that run as well. So that could be, could be one, but sort of seems like they don't really know what their best bumper horse is this year, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, what are your thoughts, Johnny? Yeah, I mean, normally we've all got a good idea on this race, haven't we? But it's still quite a lot in the air. But I do think the whoever rated the T-Shot the other day has dropped a huge bollock with that, to be honest. The, I mean, you've got to sometimes go by the eye test, and that looked like really, really good to me. Um, now, we don't know what a lot of these have raced against, do we? Um, especially first time out. But just the way he travelled so strongly and then picked up and, you know, he could have gone round again looking at it to me. And I just thought that was really, really hugely impressive. Um, and going in, the, the one run doesn't bother me at all because especially Nichols, he put Captain Teague in this last year, didn't he? Who didn't look as good um, off one run. And he finished third at a huge price. So t looks better than him. That's all I can say. So I think he'd have a huge chance. I mean, I... I backed him when I mentioned it to you guys about a month ago or whenever it was, three weeks ago, at 16 to 1. And then immediately after the race, a couple of the bookies were still offering 12, so I went in again because I just thought he looked looked really, really good. Um, I mean, of the others, again, it's hard to know, like you've already said, isn't it, with one or two runs. Um, You ought to know does look interesting and, you know, rocked up a decent figure. and also three runs, so a little bit more experience than some of these. That Cantico, it didn't, I don't know, didn't really take the eye out as much as some of the others. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to be a really wide open race. And it could be one of them again, couldn't it? That 30, 40 to 1 shot wins, who knows? It's, you know, Mullins has got other ones down the list. Petite Secret, I mean, that's only had one run as well. Um, and when they asked, Patrick Mullins in November for one horse to follow in the bumper. He actually said that horse, didn't he? Do you remember? We were stood mm. around the parade ring. And that yeah, we were putting the tracker. Yeah, I put that in the tracker straight away and only had the one run. But again, if anyone's going to have one run and win, it's going to be Willie, isn't it? So uh, there's a couple of others down there that we've not seen since. Uh, Wingmen is for Elliot, only seen once. Um, and that was back in December. Uh, that's another horse I'd like to see again, whether we'll see it again now before March, probably not. Uh, yeah, Petite Secret Wingmen. Um, a few down the bottom there, I don't think I've got much chance, but Ian's old favourite joystick down there. Oh, yeah. I, I think you've, you've got a lot of it last one now. Jesus, I've, um, I've, I've it, off. It's a shame <clears> this <throat> more green doesn't seem to be going, isn't it? Because that one's really highly thought of, but mm. maybe Aintree bound instead of all punches down. I don't know, but yeah, she's definitely one to keep an eye out and get in your trackers for next season. And there's a couple there. I, 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 Alex, obviously, Alex will read them out, but um, for what Scotty and Robbie are saying, they're another couple of um, potential ones that um, could be in the reckoning. Let's just say that. Yeah, it's been a bit of a funny year, hasn't it, with this bumper? And mm. it, it seems to be every single week there's a different favourite. Like some Willie Mullins hot pot gets named on Twitter and everybody steams into it. And then uh, next thing you know, there's a horse at six to one who's then crap and then goes out to about 25 to one. And it seems to have happened every single week, doesn't it? So um, been a bit of a funny, been a, been a bit of a funny year. Um, 
just some comments on here. Uh, Harry's likes Tishan. He's on at 16 to 1, which fair price. And he also likes Let It Rain. That's that one of Skelton's. Um, thinks she, thinks that she'll win it. Um, don't tell Ginger Joe. He hates mares in the champion bumper. Um, <laughs> but that's the horse that beat uh, Brecon Castle, who was then who's oh. previously like a really impressive winner at Cheltenham in November, wasn't he? So, yes. um, some some form there. So I don't know. He's got an RPR of one. Was it when I had a look? Uh, one fifteen, but then got the mares claim as well. So. Um, maybe never know. See, don't really know how things are going to improve through the year. Um, Scotty likes the yellow clay, another one that seems to have been shot in, in the betting over the last sort of week or so. And then, yeah, just that comment there from Robbie on Maureen, um, uh, or more green, or whatever people want to call her. Um, Maureen. yeah, just some interesting ones. Any, any final thoughts on the champion bumper, guys? No, I think that's it from me. No, that's it. Perfect. So um, that rounds up then day two of our Twitter tips video or well, our Twitter our Twitter preview video, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> we'll have another one of these this time next week. If you want to get involved, go on our Twitter page. Make sure you comment, vote, let us know your thoughts. Your comment could feature next week. Um, and we'll go from there. And in the meantime, make sure you like and subscribe and also comment on this video if you can. We really appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys, for joining us, and uh, speak to you soon.